what what does it look like for Nerdio and Remo three, and how does it uh, affect the the technology space? You know, I, I'll take a first crack at that this time, Vadim, if you don't mind. I think um, so. We've been talking for some time um, since the inception of Remo three, and uh, one of the things that we noticed was that from a management plane perspective, from a control plane, and it's unfair to call it a modern management plane because Nerdio does much more than that, but they were starting to see quite a bit of adoption on the Nerdio Manager for Enterprise space, which is where we really kind of focus, right? And um, one of the things that we started to see is that, you know, these perpetual proof of concepts that were happening around AVD were stopping because after the first 25 users or the first maybe, you know, 10 applications that people would migrate, they didn't know what to do next. What are the next sets of applications that can be modernized? What are the next sets of applications that can be rolled out? And with all the automation that Nerdio Manager for Enterprise brings, it was kind of a perfect marriage to say, hey, if I can assess your entire config manager portfolio, see if it can run in a modern workspace, assess if it's a good candidate for MSIX, and then if it is, convert it, I'd love to be able to hand that off to Nerdio Manager for Enterprise so that they can start, A, taking that and blowing it up into a VHD for app attach because in addition to multi-session, one of the biggest functionalities of AVD is the app attach ca capability. So um, handing it off, handing off a tested quality MSIX product was what I wanted to give Vadim. And then Vadim would take it and turn it into a beautiful app attach that can be deployed and managed through Nerdio Manager for Enterprise to all their host pools and desktops. So the integration really is around the fact that we'll test the application We'll build the MSIX. We'll give it to Nerdio. Nerdio will then expand it, turn it into an app attach, and ultimately manage and deploy it to their host pools. Anything to add to that, Vadim? No, that, that's that's a perfect description. <laughs> I mean, I I remember when uh, when app attach was was being rolled out. I think it started with uh, Windows 10 2004, right? So so yeah. the first half of 2020. And, and there was a lot of excitement about it. There was a lot of people who wanted to test things. And initially it was pretty, uh, you know, uh, cumbersome to do it natively. There's a lot of PowerShell scripting to stage those, you know, stage those images and then uh, register the app. So we decided, hey, we're gonna make this simple. We're gonna build out kind of a point and click interface to take an app, uh, expand it and deliver it to users or, or groups of users. And there was a lot of excitement and testing. So people were doing their own app packaging. They were downloading the sample ones that we created and posted on, on our site for people to play with, like the Notepad++ plus plus and, and such. Yeah. And, and then we saw like, hey, people were like the technology, but nobody was really deploying this at any large scale because they didn't have the MSI access, right? They just mm -hmm. needed to package their applications. And yeah. you know we would pick it up and, and deliver it but they needed to actually do the application packaging work. And I think that's where it stalled uh, from a, an adoption perspective. And, and you know, working with, uh, with Remo3 to be able to take an application and get it into MSIX really unlocks and unblocks that particular adoption hurdle, I think. So I'm, I'm very excited about the, the possibilities here. Yeah, it's quite exciting. I mean, you know, you look at the additional file formats and modern containers that are going to be supported over time. Um, you know, Vadim and I have had countless conversations and, you know, they're We've got things that are already kind of in the hopper for the next phase of integration, which uh, we can't we can't talk about unless uh, <laughs> uh, unless we, we we make everybody sign an NDA. But the the really exciting stuff is is yet to come. This is the first step, uh, in my opinion, for for something very exciting of unlocking more and more workloads to be delivered in DAS offerings. Mm -hmm. uh, I think maybe the final question uh, for this episode. So I, as I said, I did some digging on you, Vadim. I, I was watching a bunch of interviews you did with a bunch of other people as well. And on the interview you did for MSP Radio, you talked about applications being the main focus of an end user computer or desktop. The main purpose is to deliver applications. What are some of the ways that you at Nerdio are seeing it on the MSP side of things and the enterprise side of things with the importance of applications? Yeah, I think I think it's like Samit said, right? Other than the pretty background, it's all about the apps. You know, there's nothing, there's no other value to a physical desktop or, or a virtual desktop than to be able to run apps, whether those are browser-based. It's RGB, apps or man. What are you talking about? Apps. <laughs> that's right. And I think I think that's true across enterprise and MSP. You know, um, 
it's, it's all about the app. It's all about being able to get your work done, access your data, and and uh, and do the application work. So I think applications are super important. I think challenges in MSP and enterprise around applications are different. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, very excited about the the work Remo Three is doing and and the integrations we're building together to you know benefit our mutual customers to be better with their apps. You know, mm-hmm. un- unblock their migration hurdles and uh, and adopt the asset at a much larger scale. Yeah. And one of the things that, you know, like I know we're we're wrapping up the podcast, but one of the things that I kind of wanted um, to kind of call out was what the process has been like. Um, and, and Sage, you, you haven't had much insight into what this technical integration looks like, but one of the reasons that, uh, that I really enjoyed doing this type of work with Vadim is because you come from a background where you've actually rolled up your sleeves, you've mm-hmm. plugged in cables, you've seen the real life problems that our partners are facing in deploying, managing, and optimizing these complex DAS VDI environments. Um, but for those of you that might not have had the pleasure of actually working with Vadim, I would have as part of our overall spec, you know, we've gone through the process of what this integration should look like. And, you know, I put screenshots together. Vadim actually puts the code behind a bunch of it and works directly with our engineering team, uh, very hands-on in terms of saying, oh, this is why you're running into this type of bug. This, I mean, it was incredibly, incredibly kind of, I'd say enlightening to see just how involved, Vadim, you are in your platform, in your technology, and, and really kind of how much you care about it mm-hmm. and making sure that the user experience is, is as flawless as possible. So just wanted to throw that plug yeah, out there. there for you. It was, well, thank uh, you. It was, I, I appreciate it. It's been, it's been a pleasure working with you and your team as well. But, uh, yeah. but thanks for the, for the feedback. It's uh, appreciated. I mean, great. you're you're the nerd's nerd, honestly. Um, yeah. <laughs> just just the the idea yes, of of you working and interning um and in high school with these these tech problems and identifying, hey, the, these people are having some issues with their computers. I can help with that, and I know how to make it as efficient and as best as I can. Like yeah. it, it's super super exciting to see that. A little anecdote, I had a proud father moment yesterday. So, so my son, my oldest, who just graduated high school, is he's 18. Uh, he, he's doing the kind of stuff I was doing in high school. So he's going around and helping people. So yesterday he's like, you know, someone called me and, and they had a power outage and their Wi-Fi was down and I'm going to go ahead, uh, go and try to help them. Like, how would I troubleshoot it? So I walked in through like, hey, you test connectivity to the gateway and then you see if it goes beyond and then you test DNS. He's like, okay, 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 got it, got it. Good. I'm like, wow, this is, this is pretty cool. I can spend 45 seconds with this kid telling him, you know, what are the troubleshooting steps and he's going to be able to go ahead and just do it. So anyway, I he's love following so in my footsteps. At it, least it, in it, that respect. It, 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 <laughs> If only all partners would listen that well, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's incredible. Remo3 offers automated pre-deployment testing of Windows applications, OS updates, and security patches. Use unattended automation to test and assess application readiness for Windows 10, Windows 11, Windows 365, Azure Virtual Desktop, as well as identifying MSIX and multi-session suitability. Your apps, your workspace, our priority.